Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a sunset mountain lake scene step-by-step -step tutorial. Um, it's done on a 10 by 10 uh, stretch canvas with acrylic paints that were all purchased at the dollar store um, so that you can do this tutorial without having to spend a lot of money. The colors I used you can see here in this photo and here are the brushes I used. Okay, so to start this painting off, we're going to start out with the background. Um, if you've ever painted a landscape or a nature scene with me, you know that we like to start with the far back and then work our way forwards. So that means we're going to start with the sky. Now this sky is a little bit different than uh, blue, a regular daytime blue sky as it's going to be a sunset scene. So if you looked at a sunset, you'll see that there's many different colors. There's blues and reds and oranges and yellows and whites. and so. Those are the colors that we're going to be using. So here we're starting in the top left corner with our darker blue. It's more of an ultramarine blue mixed with a little bit of red to make it more of a purple, more of a purpley hue. And we're just doing brush strokes in the direction um, that we're wanting kind of these colors to eventually go. And so I started with some blue. I'm um, adding a little bit of red in there to make it a little bit more purple. Just blocking in um, this area. From there we're going to move into more of the red. And so as you can see here, I'm adding some red onto the canvas, spreading it out, and working my way back up into that blue so it creates a nice blending effect, like a nice, a nice smooth sky, as you would see um, the colors naturally changing in the sunset sky. Then as we're moving down, we're going to do the exact same thing with yellow. Uh, we're using more of a medium yellow, and we'll add in a little bit of brighter yellow um, in there, and we're just working our way back up into that red, just like we did with the red to the blue, to create that natural blending effect, uh, natural transition of color. As you work your way down further towards where your horizon line is going to be, um, it's going to get lighter and lighter. And so I'm adding a bit more bright yellow to it, working my way in, back up into it, and then adding white um, into that mixture uh, the further down we get. From there, since these are dollar store paints, you might need to do a second coat. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just adding, almost doing that exact same process that I just went through, but just with a second coat, just to give it more of that clean um, look with the canvas not showing through as much. And now the next step will be starting into our mountains. And so if you've ever looked at mountains, especially in, um, in a sunset light or sunrise light, the, the deep colors of the mountains are usually more of a purple color. And so what we're going to start with is we're going to start with a deep, deep purple. So I just used some of the purple that I had made from the red and the blue and then added some black to it to make it a darker color. And so once you have that mixed, then make sure you have a square brush. And when I say square, it's one that is flat on the top and on the sides and get some paint on your brush from there and you're going to use that not only to block in your mountains but to be able to create the peaks of your mountain. And so this mountain will have a peak generally in the middle. And so I'm just starting with that peak and working my way down. To the left of it you can see I'm making another peak. And then from there I will continue to block in my mountains with that deep purple color all the way down to about a third of the way up the canvas um, as that's where they're going to stop. One thing I like to do as I'm blocking in the mountains is I will have my brush strokes um, go towards the way that the mountain is kind of flowing down. So they'll either go down diagonally to the left or down diagonally to the right. 
And that just helps with um, locking in the snow and the highlights later, knowing which direction your, your mountains are facing. Once your mountains are all blocked in, then we're going to start adding in some highlights. So this is where you need to know which direction your sun or the light source is coming from. And so in this case, in our painting, it is coming from the right side of the canvas. And so that means the mountain faces that are towards the sun are going to have lighter highlights and the ones that are in the shade are going to have darker highlights. And so with that same purple, dark purple, mixture that I had, I just added a little bit more um, purple to it and a little bit of white just to lighten it up. And that is what I will be using for highlights, especially on the shadow side. And so as you can see here, I'm filling in the left side of those mountains with this mixture and then I'm going to be dabbing it in um, along the right side um, as well as the base layer um, of, of highlights. So I switch brushes here to a smaller brush um, just so I can be a little bit more precise with these highlights that I'm adding in now. And so this again is just a lighter step of a lighter highlight of what we just did. And these are going to be dabbed in a little bit sparser. And as you can see I'm really going down with the flow um, of the mountainside. So now I'm using a little bit of a lighter highlight on the shaded side um, just to give it a little bit more of a more of a texture make it a little bit more visible. Um, on the sunny side since it is a sunset scene the lightest highlights aren't going to be exactly white um, they are going to be just a bright pink and so it's important to clean off your brush when you're making these lighter highlights um, as you don't want your lighter highlights to be, um, be mixed in with the darker highlights and kind of muddy, make them muddy so they aren't as bright and visible as you hope them to be. Once I got my light highlights in there on the sunny side, um, I realized that I needed to make the shady side just a little bit lighter as there was too much of a contrast between the two. And so I'm just taking some of that lighter mixture, adding in a little bit of the dark purple to it, and then dabbing that in on the shady side um, to give it more of that proper contrast between the two sides. Along the bottom of your mountains, if you want to, you can take a little bit of that um, medium to light highlight and just kind of scrub it into the bottom of the mountains as that creates kind of a misty, um, foggy effect that is often created in the mornings and in, and in the evenings. All right, so now we'll jump into the pine trees as that's our next layer. And just as we did with the mountain, we're gonna start with the dark background of the trees and then work our way um, towards lighter highlights. And so trees uh, at sunset or sunrise often lose a lot of their green um, color and they go a lot more yellow. And so the trees that we're making are gonna be very, uh, very yellowy, almost a brown type, uh, type of color. And so what I've done is I've mixed together some black with some brown um, to be our background color of the trees. And you'll want the trees on the left side of the canvas, as you can see, and the right side of your canvas to be taller than the trees that are at the middle base of the mountain because those trees are further at the back of the lake. And so make sure that there's those size differences there.
I'm using a fan brush because the fan brush makes it easy to make thin lines. Um, you can use many other brushes that are flat, um, but I, I just like a fan brush. And I'm blocking in a little bit of the shoreline um, just with this dark, dark color as I want the base of the trees to, to be thick and so you can't see through to the mountain or the white of the canvas. And again, just as we did with the mountains, then we're gonna take a little bit of a lighter highlight. So I've added some yellow um, and actually some pine green um, to that dark mixture. And then I'm going over with the fan brush, just dabbing through, adding in some of these lighter highlights to the trees. And we're doing that same process over and over a few times, each time making the highlights a little bit lighter. And so the key thing when you're adding in highlights is not covering up everything that you put in before, or else that destroys the purpose of doing highlights. You want to be able to see those darker layers underneath, as that gives it the texture and the depth um, that we're looking for. You can see I've switched brushes a few times, just trying to get ones that are kind of thin enough for what I'm looking for, or small enough. The fan brush was a little bit too big for the middle back of the trees, and so I switched to a smaller um, flat brush that I just turned vertically and used good for dabbing those in there. So since this is a lake, lakes usually reflect what they have around them, so we're gonna have this lake reflect the sunset sky that is above it. And so we're gonna be using the same colors that we use in the sky, blue and red and yellow, and white. And it's almost the exact same process as the top. We start, I'm starting with the dark, darker blue in the bottom left corner, getting some red in there, blending that in um, back towards the blue, then moving into the yellow, blending that in back towards the red, and then getting that lighter white and move, moving that and blending that in with the yellow. Again, just like with the sky, um, I needed to do a couple coats to get the color and highlights that I was really looking for. And so once I added in the first coat, then I went back, started with the lighter highlights, because I wanted that to be more of a bright yellow and white. So I added in some more white, worked that back in towards the yellow, worked that back in towards the red, and worked that back in towards the blue. And when I say work that back in, they're just broad strokes, horizontal strokes, or a little bit diagonal, I guess, in this case, because that is um, the flow that we're going for. Just back and forth, slowly working your way down towards the other color. And as you do that, the two colors will mix together and create a smooth transition um, between them. Now onto the shoreline. Um, the shoreline will have some grass on it, um, but just like the trees, a lot of the green color that we see at sunrise or sunset um, isn't there, and so it will have more of a yellow um, hue to it. And so I'm taking a darker yellowy green, adding that in as a base, dabbing that down towards the shoreline on each side, and then lightening that up uh, with a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white, not too much white or else you'll kind of mute the colors. We want to keep that saturation there. We don't want to mute the colors too much, so it's good to use yellow to lighten up um, this color. And just adding that through to the layers around the shoreline. Um, even scrubbing that a little bit into, um, into the water will be okay. As you can see here, I'm going back and I'm touching up the highlights of the trees. After adding in the highlights of um, the grass, I felt like the trees needed to be a little bit lighter. And so I went back and did that. That's the nice thing about painting and acrylic paintings. You can go back, you can retouch things up right after if you want to. And then along the shoreline, you can see um, I'm just kind of 
flushing that out just a little bit to make it a little bit more smooth. Um, transition to the water, adding some of that light highlight with some white into it, scrubbing that in around the shoreline, giving it more of that um, almost the water rushing up onto the onto the shore um, type look. And the last step if you want is going back and touching up any highlights that you feel need to be touched up. Um, here I felt like the mountain needed to be a little bit brighter in some spots and so I added some lighter highlights to the mountain. If you want to touch up any other highlights so the shadow side of the mountain or in the trees or on the grass, now is the time to do it. Um, but other than that, that's it. So thanks for following this tutorial with me today. If you went through the process, I'd love to see your results in the comments below or you can send me a message. Um, there's another tutorial of this exact scene but in the daytime with blue sky and more green in it and a little bit different colored mountain if you'd like to follow that one. And I hope you give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next tutorial or next art video. And I'll see you next time on Brian Sloan Artist.